everyone, welcome to AZ Sports Box Podcast for the week of April 15th, Tax Week. Yes. Tax Week, everyone. Oh, tax Week. All oh, right. yeah, I gotta file a lot of... Hello, everybody, and welcome here to the AC Sports Box podcast. We are broadcasting live here from the ASU Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications in downtown Phoenix. I'm Kayla Bushy, being joined here by... I'm Henry Steiner, if you're wanting my face. Leo Tochterman. I'm Parker Gray. Nicole Pinter. And we're going to get right into it with some baseball to talk about the Arizona Diamondbacks wrapping up their past series against the San Diego Padres. Unfortunately, though, it was not a good series when it came to those four games against San Diego as they lost three games to one. Um, and yeah, not only that, the, let's, I mean, the Padres, they do have Manny Machado. I mean, who knows if they'll actually make it to the postseason, though, with that player, but what are your guys' thoughts so far on the D-backs' uh, first tough loss in the series this season? Well, the Padres uh, stood at 11-7 at the, the time that we're recording this, and that's that's good for first place in the NL West. So I think that this Padres team is not the Padres team of uh, the last couple years. They definitely have a lot more talent with Machado, as you mentioned, Eric Hosmer, and then they also have Fernando Tatis Jr., and a new a number of other guys up and down the roster. So I wouldn't I wouldn't say that this is an awful series loss uh, for the D-backs in any way. But I do think that the D-backs are sort of returning to earth after um, a probably a slightly better than most people would have thought uh, start to the season. Uh, that's going to be interesting to watch. Also, the Padres, uh, no, the Diamondbacks are starting the series tonight against the Atlanta Braves. And of course, we'll have more to talk about than the what to watch for segment. But talking about the Padres, do you guys think they could make it to the postseason, or is it going to take more than one just one star player? Um, I think they have. They definitely have the opportunity to make it. Uh, the Dodgers, who started off a little rough, have have turned it on a bit recently. Um, I think it's going to be uh, as of now. I, I think the D backs and the Giants are there. I see. I see almost no way that either of those teams makes the playoffs. So I think it's either going to be Dodgers, who I put as the leaders in the NL West with the Padres or the Rockies right behind them if they um, have a hot stretch uh, this season. Oh, it'll be exciting to watch. And obviously, I mean, we talked about this last week. I think we're pretty sure that the D-backs won't be going to the postseason this year, although it was a hot start, though, in the home opener. Yeah, they started well. They uh, were above 500 through the first 10 games or so. And then I just figure with all the talent that they lost this offseason, it can't, they can't be able to continue through with uh, this level of play that they started with. Oh, no doubt. Now we move on to ASU training camp as the quarterback competition continues between, looks like it's down to four, Joey Yellen, Jaden Daniels, Dylan Sterling Cole, and Ethan Long. And obviously we got a long way to go, a whole summer to get through before we even get to football season. Uh, but guys, what are your thoughts on um, in the quarterback comp for ASU? Yeah, so uh, lots of people were very excited about the recruit in Jaden Daniels. He's uh, actually ASU's third best recruit in football history, um, just behind, I believe, uh, Vontez Burfecht and Zach Miller. Um, and so anyways, he's a huge recruit for ASU. Um, he's a mobile quarterback. He's, I believe, the number two dual threat quarterback in the country out of high school. And yeah, so there's lots of excitement around him. However, uh, Dylan Sterling Cole, he has easily the most experience out of the four of them since he's been here for three years now. One of those was a red shirt. Um, and while he hasn't had really any starting experience, he has had experience more than these three uh, incoming freshmen. Um, and in terms of Joey Yellen and Ethan Long, they're both great quarterbacks as well. They just didn't really have the... Uh, they didn't really excite as recruits once Jaden Daniels jumped on the quarterback uh, crew. So, Yeah, no, yeah, looking into that, because I really think Jaden Daniels is going to get that starting QB position. Are any of these quarterbacks, I mean, are they going to be better than what we saw in Manny Wilkins and Mike Bercovici, the quarterbacks before them? I would say probably no, um, just because there's no experience, uh, D1 uh, experience on the roster as of now. I'd actually disagree with you on the fact that you think uh, Daniels is going to start. I think Ooh. Daniels is definitely the prized recruit, but I think mm -hmm. Sterling Cole, 
was the backup last year. He knows the playbook. I think Herm Edwards is going to trust him more than Daniels. I think hmm. Dan. I think I could see Daniels getting in towards the end of the year, but I think, I think that ASU is going to start with uh, Dylan Sterling Cole. I agree. I think. Yeah. Um, I think Dylan Sterling Cole will definitely start for the first game. I wouldn't be surprised if we if we see Jaden Daniels playing in the garbage time in the end of the first game. Hopefully, garbage time. I hope that it's an easy win. So, so um, you guys think that Jaden Daniels needs a lot more college yeah, football experience he, before he gets that starting exactly. position? Exactly. Um, I saw him uh, at the spring game. He kind of he just didn't. He's very skinny. He's <laughs> tall and thin. I I understand that that's a frame that's you can. It's different than the NFL. That's possible in college, but he needs to gain weight and he. Otherwise, he won't be as durable, and he's going to be prone to injury. Realistically, this is going to be this is not this is going to be a tough uh, season for ASU football wise. Just looking at the roster up and down, and looking at the Pac-12 competition. So I think. Oh well, yeah, now you have the outside conference schedule is also ridiculous. They got yeah. Kent State, Sacramento State, and some, at I mean, Michigan State. Yeah, Michigan State on the road. That's probably going to be the only hardest um, outside conference team I think they're playing in the upcoming mm-hmm. season. Um, yeah. But obviously, we know the Pac-12 isn't probably going to be good in football once again. So this shouldn't be a hard schedule. But, I mean, with Sterling Cole taking over or Daniels or any of these, this should be interesting. Yeah, I agree. It should be interesting. Um, I ASU, obviously, they lose Nikhil Harry. Lose uh, What what uh, year is, is Eno Benjamin? He's, he's a he's junior this year. So yeah, he'll okay. be back for sure. Okay, so yeah. he, he's definitely going to be the number one offensive weapon for ASU. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it should be really interesting to see. Oh, no doubt. All right. Now from Arizona Sports, we move outside the AZ Sports Box, and we currently are going on a live playoff competition that is going on inside the NBA and the NHL. And we will start with the NBA. Indiana Pacers taking on the Boston Celtics, as the Celtics do have a 1-0 to series lead. And, Leo, what do you think about this series? Yeah, so I watched game one of this series. Pacers got off to a good start, but... In the uh, second half, talent went out. Celtics, obviously coached by Brad Stevens, top top three, top five coach in the NBA. Their defense, it turned on, and the Pacers were only limited to 74 points. They really couldn't make a shot. Obviously, they lost Victor Oladipo earlier in the season. So, I mean, I think this series is going to be a mirror image of game one. I don't think there's going to be a lot of points scored, and I don't think the Pacers really have any shot of winning more than a game or two. Hmm. Do you, well, tomorrow is game two. Do you think the Pacers could rally back and tie up the series, or will Boston increase their series lead? No, Boston's a lot better than uh, Indiana. I, don't, I could see Indiana winning a home game or two, but I don't think game two is going to be back in Boston. I don't think that there's any way that Indiana uh, wins that. So, Leo, I'm um, just wondering. So, I know in the season, the Celtics were obviously top five team in the East, um, top four even. Um they had lots of struggles, though, in the middle of the season. Do you think they're finally starting to click as a team? Um, I wouldn't say that they're starting to click. I would just say that they're playing an opponent that, like, is just based on talent is a lot – is much more inferior to them. And in the playoffs, the um, – I think is when defense wins out. And they have guys that, if they're locked in, can play, like, really great defense. And I think that, especially in this series, that's that's going to that's gonna be enough. I don't know. I don't know about – their scr- struggles going um, in the regular season because uh, obviously next round they're they're set to face the Milwaukee Bucks who are the number one seed in the, mm-hmm. the Eastern Conference and I I don't love that matchup but I do think that they're gonna take care of business against the Pacers. Oh well I guess we'll have to wait and see. Moving on to the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs, we'll start by talking about the Colorado Avalanche and the Calgary Flames. Yeet, yeet. Uh, yeah, Colorado's got a one-game lead, I believe, right? They do. They are up 2-1 two to one after a commanding lead yesterday. Uh, the Flames did take game one. It was a 4-0 shutout that wasn't even close, uh, including a very disrespectful last-second shot. A bunch of fights, even though it was a 4-0 matchup, which was kind of fun to see. Uh, and then after that, uh, I think Colorado won 6-2 to two in the most recent game Yeah. Uh, to take the lead. So they right now have home court, uh, home ice. Uh, home ice, yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so they're home, and they have a chance to take a 3-1 lead against the Flames. Flames, again, I think a lot of people were expecting collapse. Uh, but the Avalanche getting some solid contributions from uh, the UMass player who they just uh, got. Uh, what's uh, McCann, I think his name is? 
We're gonna quickly yeah, look that up. Yeah, played in the national championship just last weekend, and now and he's he already his called first goal. up and he scored his first goal against the wow, Flames. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, uh, and the Avalanche were the last team. They snuck in barely. Uh, yeah, they took the Coyote spot. Um, uh, I mean, they deserved it. Yeah, so. they did. I will admit it. They were a good <laughs> enough team. They qualified. A the Avalanche score. are the most unpredictable team because they really they started off uh, hot, I think, and then they went cold. And They're very streaky. But oh, at their yeah. best, they can beat anyone. And how about Tampa Bay? Tampa Bay's falling apart. I was going to say, and they're, that's they're another, that's, another Tampa collapse. Bay, I thought, they, is a number one seed, Tampa right? Bay is not... A, so is Calgary. Calgary's also Calgary, number one yeah. seed. But not only is Tampa Bay a number one seed, they were, what, 10 wins, 10 wins ahead of any other team they were clearly the best team this whole regular season, and now Columbus has just taken them to Well, they also and have their, their second best up. player Out, is suspended. Yes. Yeah. Well, that was for game three. Yeah. And now, I, I think that they will win a game. I think that they're just too talented and they have too much riding for them. Hockey is such an emotional sport. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it's also so unpredictable as well. Yeah. The Golden Knights game is, th- those are some fun matchups. Uh, the Bruins. Bruins are shocking some people. The Maple Leafs. Uh, Dallas Stars uh, had a chance, but they lost. So they lost yesterday, I think, 3-2. to two. So they're now down in that series against and another... Moving on to another matchup. Uh, speaking of the Golden Knights, the San Jose Sharks and the Golden Knights. Uh, taking a look at the series, uh, Vegas leads 2-1. to one. The Golden Knights eliminated San Jose in, I believe, the second round last year. Um, is history repeating itself for uh, these two teams? Um, well, as far as San Jose ending their season. So as the resident Sharks fan of the podcast, I'd like to say that the Sharks this year, it's it doesn't look like the year, but, you know, no. we, we, we we'll always have next year. And then also, also, we know that the Sharks have been known to choke in the playoffs. We we, we know that. No, everyone knows that. It's like typical it's, it's San Jose Sharks. They'll San be, Jose, more be a, like Sam No Way. No, <laughs> because, that was so bad. Because it seems like in the regular season, San Jose is one of these like so most bad. competitive teams in the NHL. Yeah, and then playoff time comes and they'll choke. Someone and then every once in Sam like seven years, they'll make it well, to the yeah. finals. Well, now it's in the DNA Sam. at this point. It's it's really been <laughs> since like since the early 2000s that the Sharks have just been a dominant uh, regular season team. And then they... Uh, just choking the playoffs, obviously. Kind of like the Portland Trailblazers. If you I'd say they're. Think of a team. I, I, I would say if I was comparing them to an NBA team, it'd be somebody like better, like more like. How about like the Dallas Mavericks before they won the no, championship the, in twenty? The Trailblazers have made. The Trailblazers have made the. Uh, they have never made the NBA Finals. The Sharks neither, made the NBA Final. The the Sharks the made the Stanley. NBA Finals? They made the Stanley Cup against the Penguins in twenty sixteen or close, seventeen. Though? Still made it. The Bl- the Blazers haven't even made the Western Conference Finals. I want a better. I want a better NBA team. All right. Well, you can How about the Thunder? Uh, how about the Thunder? That's a good one. The Thunder, uh, that's a good the Thunder one. have okay. not won. They've one. gotten very close. They got, they've got there once. But yeah, they, they've yeah. got there. they got there. Oh, yeah, because they blew Let's a 3-1 see. lead to the Warriors right before the Warriors blew a 3-1 lead to the Cavs. Uh, they yeah. blew a 31-point uh, uh, lead last yeah. night. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> All right. Parker, do you have any comment? I don't know the NHL <laughs> well enough to talk about any of this stuff. <laughs> Uh, what about the, the wait, 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 wait. Uh, What about the Carolina Hurricanes? Uh, yeah, so that's going to be our next matchup we're talking about. Washington Capitals defending Stanley Cup champions take on the Carolina Hurricanes. The most the last time Carolina has been in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Years, I think it was sixteen years. It's been I don't I don't remember the last time. Uh, we could look it up, but storm surge, man. They've been do- they like they're not even used to winning. So each time they win, they have this funny thing called a storm surge. And yeah, and I mean they completely crushed at home. They're one of the best home teams, and they won five to zero last night. So they have a chance that they're only down one to two, two to one in the playoffs. Yeah, that that, that looks would like be... a complete squash match. That game three, five to zero. That's... I'd say they're more of the Bills of the NHL. <laughs> Their fan base is absolutely crazy. They don't see a lot of wins, but you know what? When you when they do see wins, you're you're kind of happy about it because they're like lovable underdogs that are like you know kind of like to smash their head into tables, like the Sacramento Kings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the Sacramento Kings won't see playoff success for another five years. Well, as we conclude the Stanley Cup playoff talk just for this week, um, who do you think so far is going to win it, uh, the Stanley Cup final? Because it's so unpredictable. Tampa Bay struggling. Been- Calgary is struggling. Open. Like, who's who's it look like so far? I, I mean, mean uh, if you had to pick let's one, see. The, uh, how are the Blues doing? We, we need to actually also, sadly pretty well. Well, the the <laughs> Islanders are surprisingly the doing Blackhawks very well. The, the Islanders are, I think, Islanders are in a sweeping too. And the Boston, 
the Blues are very strong right now. They're they're up two to one. I like the Blues. They have that underdog mentality, but also they're not really an underdog. Uh, yeah, the Islanders are up three to the Islanders are right now sweeping, but that's against the Penguins, who've yeah, been what, admittedly what happened a down to the year. Pens, man? I, mean, I, I think we all knew the Pens were going to slack off, though. I mean, it's just been a hard year for them. But making it to the playoffs, obviously, was really good enough. But... Na- Nashville Predators, too. Uh, Nashville Predators are oh, right yeah. now, I think, 2-1. Uh, they, if they escape the Stars, which are a very hard first-round draw, I think that the, again, Preds and Capitals, same similar teams as the last few years. But Avalanche can make that move. Avalanche, dark horse pick. That would be interesting. I would, I would love to see the Avalanche make it to the Stanley Cup final. They wouldn't be the first team to do it as an eighth seed, though. They've done they, it. Uh, they have they done it before? The Avalanche. I don't, I don't think so. But no, no I mean, it, I mean, it sure would be history in the making if they did. I mean, I know the 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 Nash, Nashville did the uh, the Devils and Nashville. I think did. Well, I don't have the facts with me right now, but yeah, that would be interesting. Uh, we'll have to check the history books for that. Moving on, it's time for some rapid fire. So, I know some of you guys are new to this. So basically what it is, I'm going to ask a few questions. You guys have 20 seconds to respond, uh, what your answer is going to be. And then, obviously, if you want to do a rebuttal, if someone disagrees with you and you want to defend your case, you have 15 seconds each. All right, let's go. So, let's start with the first question. Obviously, the N- NFL draft is about, looks like, a week away. Who is going to be the number one pick for the Arizona Cardinals? Now, obviously, this is setting, like, if the Cardinals make the pick. They're obviously, is to make sure they won't trade the pick. So Matt Leiner. Matt, who's it going to be? <laughs> so we'll start with you, Leo. Who's going to be the number one pick? Um, whew, Really tough. I'll go with Nick Bosa. I think that they're going to stick with Rosen as the quarterback. Honestly, could see it, could see it going either way, but... Right now, I'd say Nick Bosa. I think they're going to have to go for a trade. Like, there's no way that... Team... But if they didn't go for a trade, who's going to be the pick? That's the question. What I think is going to be Kyler Murray. They're just too hot on him right now. And if they really think that Kyler Murray is that guy, Kyler Murray, his passing, his accuracy is so much better than any other quarterback in the draft. He really is a talent that is unlike many other before. He's got, he's got like... He's being compared to Bo Jackson, Deion Sanders. When you have an athlete like that, I think they're gonna, they're too infatuated with him. So I think they're going to go with Kyler. And we'll go to you, Parker, next. Um, yeah, so I, I was really thinking that it would be Kyler Murray. But in the past few weeks, it seems like the hype around Kyler has gone down dramatically. Um, I honestly think it'll either be Nick Bosa or Quinn and Williams at this point, not Kyler Murray. I would mm. like to say that there's not a chance in hell that is Quentin Williams. Quentin Williams might go number two to the Niners though. That's a lot of smoke right now. I I think that Quentin Williams will go number two if Bosa is not picked. If Bosa is picked number one, if Bosa isn't picked number one, he'll go two. If it's not Bosa, then I think it will be Williams. Gosh, that was more than 15 seconds right there. I'm going to have to penalize you. You said 20, Caleb? 20 seconds. You're out on the next question. I'm sorry. (laughs) Uh, Nicole, who do you think is the number one pick? I'm kind of with Parker. I thought I was really high on Kyler Murray being the number one pick past couple weeks, like Leo said, they've been really hot on Rosen. They've been talking about, they've been talking Rosen up more than they've been talking about anything else. So I think they really, and it's what they should do, is they should go for their needs, which is offensive line and defense. And I think they're going to take Nick Bosa first. But here's the thing. Are they just talking Hey, you already Rosen, had your rebuttal. But here's the thing. Are they talking Rosen up to increase his dr- trade value? That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Good point. Possible. Definitely if not they, out of the realm of possibilities. If they do trade him, where do you think he'll go? I think he could go to the Patriots. Like, Giants. I was going to say Giants. Yeah. <laughs> what about the Redskins? Kyler is now officially not meeting with the Redskins. That, the was, Red... a, that was a trade possibility I did hear yeah. uh, like two I'd weeks say ago. The Reds... I think he ends up in the, he could have the NFC. I think that's kind of too smart of a trade for the Redskins to make. <laughs> <laughs> so that's I a good could, point. I could what? Not but, but what if they give up a first and a second so they give up too much, thus making it a dumb trade? I could see that happening. <laughs> I, I think if, if I was a team, honestly, I think I would... Like gladly give up a second round pick for Josh Rosen. I like. I, I think he he had the worst offensive line in the NFL last year, and he's still like a really talented guy. I, I would, I would so, gladly give up like the forty fifth pick in the draft. That's one. the thing I don't understand. <laughs> What's what do the Cardinals think that drafting Kyler Murray is going to do? Is he just going to become Russell Wilson when they were with Tom Cable as their offensive line coach, running for his life every single play and barely missing the playoff, getting sacked what fifty times? 
<laughs> wow, we are way wow. beyond our yeah. 15 seconds. All right, let's... Moving on, though, to our next question. Um, and because Henry went over time, we're going to give him 10 seconds for this one. Uh, it's plain and simple, and we're going to start. Who will be the NBA MVP this year? And we'll start with you, Leo. Um, it's going to be Giannis. Uh, Harden has had a great season. He's actually had a better season than he did last year when he won the MVP. But but the bottom line is Giannis is on the what is the what was the best team in the league this year and a team that's probably going to end up in the finals. And I think that what he's done is is just like he has a storyline. Like his team rebounded from what was it a 42 win season to winning 60 games. I think he's got the storyline and I think Voter fatigue is a real thing, and people aren't going to want to vote for Harden two years in a row. I shall not be silenced. Right, you I have, agree. You, you have 10 I, seconds. I think that Giannis will win. Shaq, a consensus top five all-time player, said that, that Giannis... Like, all right, a, a borderline, said that Giannis is better than him. And he said that he is the real Superman. Giannis has done things this year that haven't been done since Wilt Chamberlain, since days of MJ, since... I, Dude is unbelievable. I say Giannis. Mm. Parker? Yeah, I'm going to take a hot take here. Um, I'm going with James Harden. Um, okay, so oh, wow. <laughs> hear me out. Okay, so if they didn't have James Harden this year, okay, I, you can say the same argument for Giannis, but if they didn't have James Harden this year, with Chris Paul out, this team would be completely different in that stretch where he wasn't playing. Um, obviously, his scoring was a huge factor in all of these wins that they gained this year. Um, of course, Giannis is a huge impact on his team as well. He leads the team in practically every stat possible. But still, it's a talented team without him. Obviously, he's a huge factor in their wins, but I do think that James Harden has just had an incredible year that no one's ever seen anything like it before. Um, and I think he deserves the back-to-back, -to, -back, to be honest. Uh, I'm just going to make a rebuttal saying, <laughs> can you think, do you think <laughs> that, that Harden can win with being a four seed? Because the Rockets... The Rockets are going to have to face the Warriors in round two if they win. Do you think that a team for such limited team success that he could be considered the league MVP? Um, I'm going to actually rebut you, your rebuttal. I actually think <laughs> wow. like he was a four seed, but the last day of the regular season determined like seeds like two through six. So if he just got a little luckier on the last day of the season. Uh, no, two is not an option. They were eliminated from the two seed. Uh, like, no, I don't think so. I don't think, no, that's not true. I'm telling you. That's not true. We can, we can right, back check money that. Money on the table. <laughs> we can back check that. I'll put five bucks on that. That's not true. Um, but yeah, like, I don't think that seeding is that big of a deal. I think Giannis should still win it. But but I think that, like, that's not necessarily why Harden, like, is not as deserving as Giannis, in my opinion. All right, Nicole, I mean, you can I mean, answer. I, Henry, are you going to? All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of torn between Giannis and Harden because I think Harden's really carried the Rockets more than people think. But Giannis has just had such, honestly, kind of a breakout season with the. I mean, the Bucks especially have had a breakout season. So I, I want to give it to Harden two years in a row, but I think the voters will go with Giannis just to not vote Harden two years in a row. That would be interesting. I mean, it definitely looks like all signs point to Giannis being the MVP this year. Moving on, no, our next question, and we're only three questions in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, talking about both the NBA and NHL playoffs, so picking one team from the NBA and one team from the NHL, which team is for sure going to be eliminated in the first round from both of these sports? Detroit, Detroit. Pistons. Hey, 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 hey. We'll start one at a time. I think we all agree that it's Detroit. Detroit. My, my Detroit Pistons. So we're all yeah. default Second going team. by Detroit. So how about NHL? We'll start with you, Leo. Uh, NHL. San Jose? Uh, no, I think San Jose could, could still fight. Um, let's see. Um... Pens, penguins, um, right? Yeah, I'm also going with the Penguins. Yeah, Detroit yeah, they're down and... down 3-0 right now, and they're not looking any better than they have in the last three games. I think they can still, like, hold off another game. Like, they can win game four, but then game five is when they get eliminated. I think that's what will be the case. Um, do you disagree with any of this, Nicole? Not really. <laughs> I so... mean, I think last I checked, Columbus was up 3-1 on Tampa. So, I... I could see Tampa being gone tonight, which kind of seems like a big surprise to a lot of people. At the same time, it's not. But I mean, Columbus, it's been the better team this whole series. They're going to win that series. Oh, for sure. So, I mean, I think we've all decided Detroit Pistons are out. 
Sad uh, Pittsburgh thing. Penguins are out. Yeah. Indiana Pacers are out. Uh, uh, the <laughs> teams are out. Yeah. True. Yeah. Teams are out. All right. All right. Um, so moving on to our next question. I guess this is kind of like two questions yeah. into one. Um, but when will Lucan's door and Zylan Cheatham get picked in the NBA draft? And if they get picked, what round will they get and who are they going to? Um, so I think Dort will definitely get picked in the first round uh, and very late in the first round. Um, unfortunately, I don't think he's... If, if he had stayed another year and uh, worked on his shooting, I think he could be top 15 next year. But with him going straight to the draft, I think he'll be at the end of the first round, maybe early second round. And in terms of Cheatham, I don't think he will get drafted. Obviously, he has lots of talent. He just can't shoot as well as any other players in the draft. I think he'll sign with a team later after the draft. I think that uh, right now Lugans Dort will be drafted in the mid mid first round. Like I think he'll if he goes to a, like a playoff team, he'll be a very favorable situation to kind of develop like a player like Hawaii has. Uh, I think that Cheatham will probably get a flyer. Maybe like he might be uh, Mister Relevant number sixty overall. Uh, could be fifty nine around 60. there. So, <laughs> I'd hope so. I think that Dort will probably end up. In the twenties, low twenties, um, in the first round, I can I, I like Dort a lot, but I see I see him next year being probably not playing too much on whatever he, team he's on, probably getting a lot of minutes in the the G League, in my opinion. And then I think Cheatham, I think like Henry said, I think he could be towards the end of the second round, or he'll just he'll sign a um, a. Uh, a, co- a free agent contract with uh, a team after the draft. He is currently ranked as the 57th prospect on uh, ESPN's big board, and I think Lugans Dort is ranked as the 27th. Mm, that'll be interesting. And uh, just just for, for the ref- yeah, just for reference, I, I believe Dort rose to as high in some mock drafts early in the season as like a he's late at, lottery he's at 15. pick. Like, yeah, he was yeah. at like yeah. So yeah, he, he was he was up there. Be interested. Yeah. I'm kind of with Parker on this one on on Dort. I think if he had stayed back another year, I think a lot. There's quite a few guys in this draft that I think if they had stayed back another year and worked on their shooting or whatever, they'd be higher draft picks next year. And I think Dort's included in that category. And I'm I'm with most of you guys on this one. I don't think Cheatham's gonna get drafted personally. I think with him being one of the latter prospects out there, I think he's gonna sign with the team after the draft. Yeah, it'll be interesting to watch. Um, but I think we all agree Dort is definitely going to be into the NBA. Uh, Cheatham, uh, I mean, I think he'll eventually sign. But, I mean... Do you guys... How about this? Uh, also, by the way, it is official now. The Columbus Blue Jackets have swept the Tampa Bay Lightning. So, wow. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, Lightning is out. Lightning yeah. is out. Swept? Uh, yes, yeah, swept. swept. That's incredible. Um, That's crazy. But do you think that... So, because of new rules, do you think that Zylan Cheatham, if he does not get drafted will decide to come back to ASU and play. No, he's made, he's made it specifically. Yes, yeah, now it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's possible. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So if you do not, so you can declare for the draft. If you do not yeah, get drafted. But he drafted, was a senior. A redshirt senior. He was senior. a redshirt senior. So he can technically. But he was a redshirt transfer senior. So he loses a year he of eligibility. He has one more year of eligibility. Ooh. I don't think he has a year of eligibility. I think he's able to gain but that, he, year that, that He's made that might, it. He's he made it very clear he isn't coming yeah. back. But that's because he might think he's getting drafted. And he wants to show. It's like he wants to show that he's committed to getting drafted. But I think, worst case scenario, he could totally bail and be like, I didn't get drafted. I want something more secure. See, with that, Michigan recently, uh, three players declared for the draft and the only one I really don't see is Jordan Poole why is he going and I think he's he's doing kind of what Cheatham's doing because yeah. Poole should definitely stay after this year especially Poole, Poole he will should, get drafted though he no, should, he oh no he needs to stay back <laughs> no if his shooting this year he, he he got a little bit in his head if you watch the tournament he would just get the ball take shots which again is what Michigan offense has been all season sometimes good sometimes bad but I, Iggy, I, I'm, Iggy's going, into the Iggy's going which mm-hmm. I like. I, obviously, Charles Matthews. Obviously, I'm going to miss them both. But really, the only problem I have with the three of them is Poole. And I think he's kind of with Cheatham in that, is that they're trying to show they're committed into going to the draft, into taking that next step. But if they can come back, they absolutely should. By the way, another NHL update. The Islanders are currently up 2-1 to one with 10 minutes left in the game, and they can also complete the sweep. Uh, but the Tampa Bay Lightning lost 7-3 to three in Game Holy 4. Hell. Serious? Yeah, complete <laughs> blowout. Gosh, it's a breaking news episode on yeah. this show today. <laughs> um, okay, moving on, uh, and we'll get to our what to watch for later. But let's talk about a more important topic that I think should be 
brought to light here. The Phoenix Mercury, the WNBA draft, took place this past weekend. And the Phoenix Mercury chose Sophie Cunningham from Missouri. Um, obviously, the Mercury already has some star players like Brittany Griner. Diana Taurasi is still around. Is she still um, Is she one more year? I believe so, right? I mean, I pretty sure. Any, I haven't heard anything about her leaving. Yeah. I mean, I, she's definitely been in the Mercury for a while. It's oh, been a yeah. long time. Yeah, no, no, no. Time, she's so, under, the question um, is if she's that, retiring or not. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's why I'm thinking, like, wouldn't be shocked if she wants to retire. She's, um, she's, she's definitely old. She's, what, 30... Probably 34, 35. No, I thought she was like more 30, 30 38 or something. Yeah, I think she's older than 34. 36. But moving into the future, though, what do you guys think of uh, so- Sophie Cunningham as the draft pick? Um, I honestly don't know a ton about uh, NCAA women's basketball, so I didn't get to see a ton of her. But obviously, if she's a top 30 draft pick, then she must have some talent, of course. Um, honestly, I don't have much to say about it, but... Um, any new rookie on a team can help. It just depends on how she is able to work with the team in the off season and uh, what kind of I don't. Do you know what kind of minutes she might be getting? Is she someone that will be on the bench pretty soon or? Anybody? I mean, she was a second round pick. The Mercury did not oh, do a second round. Pick. They did not do a round uh, first round picks. They obviously must have traded, and that was the thirteenth pick from the second round. Okay. So, I mean, she'll probably I, be benched. I, I assume she'll definitely start as a bench player, but still it always helps to have a good, solid player on the bench to come in for those minutes. So, Chicago Sky got um, Katie Lou Samuelson. Ooh. Big pick at number four. What about the uh, Notre Dame player? Uh, who Jackie hit the... Young? No. Oh, uh, Rike Akumbawale. Uh, Akumbawale. Yeah. Yeah. Where is she? Did she? She got drafted, right? Wasn't she the number one overall? No, that no. was Jackie Young. Who? And... Who? Where did a, Where did Arika Ungawala go? Because I think I remember her at uh, Notre Dame. She was insane. Yeah. Last year she's she got hit, that killer mentality. Yeah, last year she hit two buzzer beaters to win both the uh, the semifinal of the NCAA uh, women's tournament and also a buzzer beater to win the national championship. So two games in a row. Yeah, back to back. Yeah, got it. Got her recognized by her favorite player Kobe, who she wore number twenty four because of. Mm. Hmm. She has that mama mentality. Yeah. Who's <laughs> the good guy? Uh, <laughs> oh, it's good. Can I get into that? Okay. <laughs> well, go, we'll talk. Like I said, we'll talk about uh, ba- more basketball later. But moving into our what to watch for segments, and of course, a lot going on, especially with D-backs. They are currently the leading summer sport. Uh, basically, the only legitimate sport that's going on over the summer. Uh, they have some upcoming series against the Atlanta Braves. Uh, what do you guys think of that? Um, they start their series tonight, their first game, but what do you guys... They're playing right now. Yeah, yeah, so what do you guys think of um, how this series will shape up for the D-backs following that tough series against San Diego? Uh, I think that they will bounce back. I think that they can get a win. The Braves are a pretty tough team. Uh, one of the few teams who have a lot of young talent uh, favored, I think, to win that division. I think if they get one win, uh, where they split, they split, uh, maybe get maybe win one, lose two, something around there. Yeah, I think that I think it's probably going to be a tough series. They're on the road. They but as of now, actually, they're they're winning the first game. I think if they get one or even if if they get two, that should be considered a success. The Braves are a better team than them, and they're also on the road. So I I think yeah. Okay. And is that all we have to say about baseball? All right. Moving on to our last topic. And we saved, beat the Padres. We saved the best for last because we got a lot of knowledge about basketball in this room right now. Uh, the NBA playoffs. Now, obviously, in this earlier segment, we uh, talked about the Pacers, Celtics, all these matchups because they're taking place tomorrow. What matchups are we really going to want to watch tomorrow? And we'll start with you, Leo. Well, not just tomorrow, just over the or week. Or over the week, yeah. So, uh, I mean, obviously we want to watch the Pistons, right? Uh, no, uh, actually, I think all of the series besides that series are, are decently interesting, I'd say. Um, for, for me, for matchups to watch, I think that, I think that there's a couple of uh, series that are probably going to go six games. I, I think looking at it now, I, I don't know if I see any of the series going like seven. I don't know if you get The one series that I think it might go seven is the, the Blazers-Thunder. I, I honestly don't think Nets Sixers is going past six. I think six, yeah. I think I think Philly is the better team, and I think they're going to win out. I I do think Portland OKC is a really good series. Uh, Portland won game one, but OKC sh- shot unsustainably uh, bad on on threes, and that's I think that's going to rebound, and I think they're going to win tonight's game. 
we'll, we will see about that. But, yeah, I'm really excited about that series. Other than that, um, I think the I think Houston and Utah can be interesting if Utah can, can steal a game in Houston. But, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think a, a interesting series are? I think that uh, the – well, OKC is definitely going to be interesting because Paul George also had a shoulder injury. Uh, and so he, was, he said afterward that he could barely even lift his arm. And so Paul George, playoff P, you know? He, Paul George can definitely do something that uh, very close as far as talent wise, as far as star wise. Both have two all stars, and uh, then not not much around them uh, with Damian Lillard, C.J. McCollum, and then uh, Paul Paul George and Russell Westbrook. Uh, I do think that the Nets can go seven games. I think they're a scrappy team. They won, and I don't think that the Nets are going to lose at home in a game six. I just don't really see that happening for the series. So I think that that can stretch to seven. Uh, the other game that we can all mention was the Clippers game from yesterday. Mm-hmm. Came back from an NBA playoff record, 31 points. The most points ever against the defending and presumable champions, the Golden State Warriors. What do you guys think about that game? Like, could we just talk about that game? That was, that was incredible, I think, for L.A., uh, for Golden State to give up a, another 3-1 lead, if you will. Um, <laughs> but I 31, think... 31, 31. Yes, of course. <laughs> Still 3-1. But I think Golden State's just going to come out firing at all cylinders of rest. I mean, LA's not going to win this series, but I think it just makes things more interesting down the line for Golden State. Should there be concerns? Like, obviously those questions are already being brought up. Should there be concerns for the Warriors? Those questions have been brought up since the tail end of the regular season. I don't think so. I don't think they're going to run into any problems until they probably hit Houston or the Western Conference Finals. But it was interesting. It makes things more interesting for Golden State, at least. I think that Golden State, that collapse was obviously a huge deal. I really don't think it changes anything about this series. I think they'll still win in five games, maybe six. I, I just don't anticipate uh, like a Clipper home crowd actually being anything, <laughs> anything tough. Um, but I do think that in the second round, they're going to face... A big challenge with with likely the Rockets, who honestly should have beat them last year. If if Chris Paul doesn't get hurt, but that that's a, if that's they don't of, miss the what I think twenty seven threes. threes. Yeah, it's <laughs> threes in a row. But yeah, I, I actually think it's good for Houston that they're going to see them earlier because that means that Chris Paul is more likely to be healthy. The rest of the roster is more <laughs> likely to be healthy, which is which is better than facing them in the conference finals when you know stuff happens. I think that the Clippers can stretch it to six games. I think that they can win another game at home. Uh, but if there's one thing that you can say about the Clippers is that they play with heart. They were down 31 points, and this is a team that traded away their best players, traded away Tobias Harris, lost Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, and Chris Paul over the last three years. They had no reason to make the playoffs because if they, I think if they made the playoffs, they didn't get their draft pick. But you know what? They fought. They made it on the heels of Dario Gallinari, Lou Williams, and Montrez Harrell, who, by the way, hit the clutch threes. They had production from Landry Shumant, who hit the game-winning three uh, against the Warriors. They're going to be a very fun team to watch. And honestly, just like the We Believe Warriors, they're a team that you just want to root for because they have such heart, grit. Patrick Beverly uh, getting his... I mean, he got the six fouls, but he really drove that. That... Like, his peskiness, and that team just resonates around him. Yeah. You know, honestly, I'm going to say that uh, with the Warriors, um, DeMarcus Cousins, he's out indefinitely, probably for a long time, with a torn left quad. Um, and oh, it's I, a torn left quad? Yeah. yeah. Yep. And I have, to, I have to say, um, now that the Warriors only have four All-Stars, I think only. they're going to lose in five. You know they're better without Boogie on the court, right? Yeah, that was, yeah, that was a joke. Yeah, it's four All Stars. Yeah, I actually don't think that With only losing. Four. I actually don't think Sad. losing Demarcus hurts them that much because their best. Li- yeah, if at all, because their best lineup is is with Demarcus on the bench. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the death lineup with Curry, Clay, KD, no. Draymond, and then Iguodala. So yeah, I don't. I, I mean, it's it's really brutal for Cousins himself. He's looking for a big payday this summer. Obviously, signed with Golden State for the one year deal. But yeah, I don't think it really impacts their championship uh, aspirations at all. I got a question for you. So both two seats lost uh, the first games. Which seven seats, San Antonio or Orlando, do you think has the biggest chance of knocking out either Toronto or Denver? Well, I I, I would say San Antonio for one reason. They already won Game One, and they're up. Both both teams won Game One. Yes. However, using technology, uh, the Raptors are 
are up big in game two, and we can we can they they've won game two, um, and the Spurs are actually up on the Nuggets right now by I think about fifteen points. So I I definitely would say the Spurs because the Spurs are just better than the Magic, and the the Raptors are better than the Nuggets. So. <laughs> Yeah I, yeah, I agree. I mean, Orlando, if you're looking at game two today, Orlando did not score their first points until there were seven minutes left in the first quarter. And then, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's not a good, good. <laughs> And then one more thing about Orlando, they shot, I, I believe it was, they shot 54% from three, which is unsustainably hot shooting um, in game one, and Toronto didn't shot really poorly. I, I think those, for the rest of the series, those are going to reverse. It's already reversed tonight, and I, I don't, honestly, I don't think... Orlando wins. They they could win maybe one more game in this series, but they're not going to have a raucous home crowd. It's it's Orlando. Like I I think it's, it's at most it's going to be six games. What do you guys think about Denver? Do you think is are the Spurs just the unkillable team? Like they again, people they were saying that they die. weren't. No, they, they just don't die. die. <laughs> they just people, don't they're die. walkers. If you guys are uh, fans of Game of Zones, they are literally the walkers from. <laughs> Uh, Game of Thrones. Game of Zones. Game, like what is that? Game of Zones. Bleacher, uh, Bleacher, Bleacher Report. Report. Oh uh, my gosh! Recommend it for everyone. Uh, great. It's like a Gridiron Heights. Yeah. Oh my gosh! But it was. I need to see Heights. this. Yeah. You need to. I'll show you. Don't worry, everyone. Uh, you can put a link in it uh, for Game of Zones. You can put a link to the first episode. Uh, it was about uh, Jimmy Butler and the whole situation with him in Philly and Minnesota. And then there was a uh, one about um, the Nets and how they kind of created their team and how they're setting up for success in the next year. Mm, it'll be exciting to watch. Moving on to the last question, um, and only pick one team. Who's going to win it all this year? Uh, final two teams. Final uh, two have teams. A final or, uh, yeah. Um, ooh. I'm going to go out on a limb. I think that the Which Houston... I hate... Ha. Huh. I think that the Houston Not Rockets winning. are going. I, I think the Houston Rockets are going to beat the Warriors in the second round, and I think it's going to be Rockets Bucks in the finals. Who wins? Milwaukee. Rockets. In how many? How many? Yeah, the, I'd say this. Milwaukee in seven. That's mm. literally the exact same thing that I was going to say, and I agree with Leo completely. See, oh, I don't. Wow. I think Milwaukee was the best regular season team, and they're going to walk through Detroit, obviously. But I think they're going to run into more trouble than people might think. Uh, I I really like Toronto. I like Toronto winning that matchup against Milwaukee. I think Milwaukee kind of, they're inexperienced. Experience means everything, I feel like. I, so I, I have Toronto coming from the East. From the West, I have a really hard time still going to, uh, against Golden State until, you know, like they struggled a little bit this year, but not enough for me to be super concerned. I like Toronto. I like Golden State. And... Sadly, I think I like Golden State to win it again. <laughs> How many games? I I think it goes six or seven. Mm. I think that's a good matchup. That goes six or seven. I'm gonna agree with Nicole. You can't bet against the Warriors. It's hard they, to. They, oh, I yeah. think that the Warriors will definitely make the finals. I do think that the Bucks make the finals. I think we're gonna have two one matchups again, uh, and so not again, but I think we're gonna have a double one matchup. And I this is where I'm gonna bring in the inexperience of the Bucks, uh, although they do have great coaching. Ken, Giannis, and Chris Middleton, because they do have another all-star. They have the depth, but there's four all-stars on the Warriors. And they haven't been here before. And, Milwaukee, that and is. And Milwaukee has not been there before. So I'm going to say Golden State in six. Mm. Right. Actually, wait, who gets the home field in that? In Milwaukee? Milwaukee, 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 Milwaukee would get home. Yeah. Milwaukee court. would get home court. You know what? Um, Are you going to take Milwaukee? No, I was just going to say six or seven. I'm still oh, okay. going to say six. I'm going to say Golden State over Milwaukee in six. Oh, man, I cannot wait to see everyone's reaction to see if they're right or wrong next week. But that is. What gonna... about you, Caleb? Ooh, I mean, I'm not. I haven't been into NBA in a while. I'm more of a hockey person. But if I had to pick, though, I would say, um, gosh, either Golden State. I want my Orlando Magic to win it because I yeah. I am from Orlando. But yeah, I know it. the Magic. To you. Yeah, man. <laughs> The, the the dream is over. So, yeah, it's not going to happen. Toronto, I think, is going to easily take down Orlando. I I do think it's I think it's going to be Milwaukee and Golden State in the finals. I think both of these number one seeds will survive, uh, even though it does seem hard to believe. I think it's possible. I think it could happen. Uh, picking one of those two teams, um, I think Milwaukee could win it all. So uh, How many games do you have? Uh, Milwaukee and four. I'm, I'm choking. Wait, I'm wait, choking. Wait. I was like, hold on. <laughs> like the, like, Senior John's drop was so freaking hilarious. 
<laughs> no, no, Milwaukee in seven. I, it will be a, it will be I a tough fight till the end. Five, so. like, no, no, no <laughs> Milwaukee in seven because it's going to be a tough fight because it, it it has to be six or seven. I don't think it's going to come down to five or four. So. But Golden State, it has to be seven. If you're having Golden State Milwaukee in the finals, I think it no, goes they down to they seven. never go down without a fight. So yeah, it goes down to seven. So we got a bunch of parity here. We got a lot of different uh, matchups. Uh, Leo and Parker, uh, you know, they chose the same thing. They're boring. But, yeah, yeah we'll yeah, find bo- out. We're boring yeah. by saying that the Golden the Warriors State Warriors, are not gonna make it through the that we round. thought that they were going to lose. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> all right, all right. We cannot wait to talk about this more next week. That is going to do it for our podcast for Leo Totterman, Parker Gray, Henry Steyer, and Nicole Pinter. I'm Caleb Bushy saying goodbye for now. We'll see you back here, same place, same time next week.